Welcome to Rockstar Productions, where in this video we're going to show you how you can modify your Nintendo 64 to play Japanese imports and you don't have to break those tabs off. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rocksaw Productions. If this is your first time to the channel, I want to just take a second and thank you for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here with the channel. If you like what you see here, do me a favor, check out some of the other videos that we have here up on the channel. We have almost 400 pieces of content at the time of this filming. And if you really like what you see here, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. That way each and every time we do upload a new video, you're kept the most up to date. So if you followed the channel for any point in time, you know I love Japanese imports. I even really enjoy PAL imports too. And Nintendo, a lot of times you can play uh, an NTSC J on a US console. You just have to make some modifications to your systems. On the N64 and the Super NES, there are these tabs inside the cartridge slot that basically denote whether or not it is a US or a Japanese game. Well. You can break those tabs off. I don't like damaging systems like that. And on a recent eBay search, I found this little guy here, which we'll show you close up on the bench. This is basically a new cartridge slot tray for your N64. And this little adapter will allow you to play US or Japanese N64 games on your US or Japanese N64. So we are going to hit the bench and show you all the steps that you need to be able to do this. Let's get started. So before we dive into the actual modification, I want to show you why the modification is even necessary in the first place. So I have my copy of Super Mario 64, which you guys saw playing on the screen. This is the US version. This is the Japanese version of Kirby. So looking on the back, basically what Nintendo did for region locking, you see these two tabs. Basically what Nintendo did was the placement of these tabs determined the region locking of the game cartridge. If it was all the way to the edges, it was a US cart. If it was inset in, it was a Japanese cart. So um, there have been people I know that have simply bought US backs to retrofit the back of their Japanese games. I have not opted to do that. So at the same time, you might be wondering why not just get the US version? Why even get the Japanese version? For action platformers and things that don't have a whole lot of Japanese to them, these are a lot cheaper, quite honestly, than the US version just because there were more of them out there. Now, the modification itself is pretty simple and straightforward. This is the tray. Basically, all that we have to do is we have to open up our N64 and install this tray in place of the one that's already there. To do that, we're going to need a few tools, including game bits. I think this one uses the 4.5 millimeter. Um, I also have ones that'll fit my Hitachi power driver here. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. You may find having a tweezers or a pliers handy too, um, just to get everything taken apart. And then finally, the other thing that you should have is something to kind of hold all your screws together because you don't want to have a screw loose. See what I did there? So let's see here. I think this is a 4.5. Now on here you have one, two, three, four, five, six screws that we're going to be removing. Now at this, I should be able to lift the feet right off. You may need to, that one was just caught a little bit in the last couple of threads. And this is where having the tweezers can come in handy too, just to, to grab the screws here. Next, what you need to do is you need to pop out the memory card, or not the memory card, but the RAM card. Now at this point, this should all lift right off, and it does. We're not gonna do anything with this part of the system. Everything is gonna be done with the lid. So on the underside here, you can see there's a screw there and a screw here. Here's the tray, and if I flip it over, you can see how it says USA 5 right there. This is the tray that we're gonna remove. Now, I could use just my Phillips screwdriver and undo this. Actually, I will, because there's they're not very deep. I do also have a Phillips head bit for my uh, power driver that you see there that I could have used. So pop that, I'm gonna slide this aside. Flip this over because I wanna show you the tabs in here. So now looking at this, you can kind of see there's the tab right there and there's one right there. And that's basically what the cartridge itself will key into and now that it's out, you can actually kind of see how the cartridge would fit right into that. 
and some people have taken just like a side cutters or a Dremel rotary tool or something like that, shave these off. I don't like destroying my consoles if I don't have to. Um, and really there's never a reason to destroy your consoles. Um, and I know some people might say, well, just take this out altogether and bypass this. This helps align the cartridge in the system itself to make sure the pins and everything are lining up. So you don't want to forego this. Here you can see the new one, and this is a 3D printed one that I got off of eBay. Um, there was about 12 bucks, I want to say, is what I paid for it. There are people who have plans out there too, um, but it is essentially the same height, style, design, and everything as the original. It just foregoes that region locking tab. So we are going to take this, and the one thing you need to be aware of is there is a slot right here. That slot aligns with this tab here, and you don't want to do what I just did there, which was to pop that bad boy out. Dang it, these may be a little bit of a pain to, to keep aligned in here. And now that that's in, it retains the, the door like it needs to. And we're just going to drop the screws in. Now, one thing when you're threading into plastic like this, and these holes are a little bit tight because they are 3D printed, you might want to take a reamer or something to open those up. out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Don't go gung-ho on this, just you know, snug it down, that's all you need to do. All right, now we have that started. Again, pushing that down. Thread that in. Now flipping it around, you can see everything's working there like it needs to. Now we just need to put the system itself back together. For those wondering, this is the same uh, N64 that I did the RGB or the uh, Voltar mod set on. Now for these, I start the screws with the, um, basically the hand tool. And I'll get them most of the way with my power driver then, making sure I have my clutch set very loosely. Now that I have those in there, I can load up the other four. And with these last couple turns, we are gonna be ready to connect it back up and test it out. Once, of course, we also go ahead, need to put the ram cart back in there or the jumper, whichever you may have. Go that way, go that way. There's our lid. So now let's check out actually how the cartridge is going. Here's a US game. Feels normal. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary there. A Japanese one. Perfect. Exactly like it should be. That's great. Let's wrap it up. So here you can see it's playing the Japanese version of Kirby and uh, Kirby 64 or something with the Crystal Shards or that might be another game, but uh, everything is working here exactly like it should. That's super awesome. And as you saw, it only took a couple of minutes to do that modification. It is really simple to do and you don't have to permanently damage your console to be able to do it. Now, like I mentioned, I got my adapter off of eBay. It was about 12 or $13. There are, you know, if you have a 3D printer, you can download plans to print your own as well. That's all this was, was a 3D printed little adapter. I just don't own a 3D printer. So in a couple of minutes, you can go ahead and unlock the true potential of your NTSC 
N64. Now one thing, I haven't tested this with PAL games, I don't know if it would work. However, if you have a Japanese or a USA NTSC console, it should work without a problem. Now, if you have any comments or questions, as always, feel free to leave the comments down below in the comments section. You can also email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Hit me up on Twitter at rocksolidstudios. You can visit us over on our Instagram page at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. And then we also always have a conversation going over on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions. Now, if you are looking to pick up parts and accessories and tools like the, the game bits that you saw me use to actually get inside the N64, tools, cleaning supplies, and whatnot, do me a favor, head on over to castlemaniagames.com. The cool thing is Ryan has it set up basically where if you spend $30 or more on the site, you get free standard shipping and handling in the lower 48 states. And uh, most items on the website, if you use promo code ROX10, you save 10% off your order. And that will include things like the game bits that he carries on there. They are great tools to have, not just for getting in your consoles, but for getting in your game. So sometimes you may need to change a battery. You may need to really do a thorough cleaning. You, If you are a retro gamer, you need a set of game bits in your collection. Cannot recommend them highly enough. Now, if you do want to help support the future of Rocksaw Productions too, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you get early access to all of our content, exclusive one-on-ones with me, a whole lot more. Plus, one of the cool things, too, is you get to have my gratitude, just like these people that you see on screen here. I really appreciate everyone who helps support the show each and every month. You can also pick up some Rock Solid Productions merchandise if you would like to over in our Teespring store on screen right now. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more featuring the Rock Solid Productions logo on NES, Super NES, and N64 cartridges. Even N64 cartridges! N64 cartridges! And like I mentioned at the top of this video too, if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. That way each and every time we do go live, we do post new videos, we have new content for you, you are kept the most up to date, especially if you hit that bell notification icon. So quickly and easily, how you can go ahead and make your N64 be able to play US or Japanese games. A couple bucks, not too bad. I am Gary, this has been Rock Solid Productions. I've got some imports to play. I'll catch you soon.